Now, turn back with me to the Gospel by John. Because Jesus, by the way, talked about all this. Uh, what's so neat for many people is to realize how interconnected the Bible is, you know? Uh, I do know that, I know very little about medical things, but I do know that one of the great struggles that surgeons have as they're doing their surgical work is that it's very hard to cut one part of the body without severing those, those feathery uh, filaments of the nerves that radiate out all through the body. And if, you, if you're not careful, you can cut out the cancer or the whatever the problem is and damage everything that's connected to it. Did you know that a lot of people think of verses like cutouts and they don't realize every verse is interconnected with all the others. There, there are no doctrines that just are just out there all alone. They're all a part of a fabric. And so every time you find a verse, it's connected, completely sewn with a bunch of others. So this doctrine of redemption, look, look at John chapter 8, verse 44. Because the slave market, Jesus says, is this earth. Jesus in John 8, 44 explains this, this Pauline doctrine of redemption by giving us the backdrop. And the backdrop is this. The slave market is sin. And the, the earth is a slave market, and all humans are born as sinners, and all subjects are born in slavery and born under the dominion of Satan. Do you realize that? You know how you can become an American citizen if you're just born here in America? Did you know that just being born on earth makes you a subject of the devil? He is actually your father. Jesus said. See what he says in verse 44? You are of your father the devil. The desires of your father you will want to do. Do you catch that? You can see who your father is. Jesus said there's only two potentials. Your father the devil or your father in heaven. Either it's God the father or the devil that is your father. How do you know? By what you desire. Look, look what it says in verse 44. And the desires of your father you want to do. You and I have the same appetites and desires as whoever fathered us. So when you're born again, the justifying death of Christ issues into new desires from a new father, your father in heaven. And that new desire is that you live out the sanctifying life of Christ. See, that's the heart, the drivetrain of the gospel. Sanctification and justification are two chambers of the same organ. They're two sides of the same coin. They are, they are indivisibly linked. And if there is any problem with either one, there is a serious condition. And Jesus says, you were born with a serious condition. The desires of your father you want to do. He's a murderer. He doesn't stand the truth because there's no truth in him. He speaks a lie. He speaks from his own resources. He's a liar and the father of it. And that's how all of us were born. Desiring our own way to the point of even being murderous. But Jesus further explains, back up to verse 34, same chapter, John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, now here's Jesus furthering his discussion of this redemption of slaves. He says, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a what? Slave, Slave of sin. Do you understand that we were born slaves of the devil. That's why no matter, you, you can take a pig, you can wash it up, you can powder it, you can put a bow on its tail, you can do whatever you want, you turn it loose, what does it desire? Filth. You understand? Religion powders people, puts bows on their tails, washes them externally, but does not change their desires. Only God can change our heart. See, our heart desires something. And Jesus said, you know who your father is by what your desires are. So verse 34, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. We're enslaved by our desires. But into the hopeless slavery our sins bring us, look at verse 36. In comes a redeemer, Jesus. He said, I am the only one that can liberate you. And I liberate you by changing you on the inside. I give you a new operating system. I give you new desires. And see what he says in verse 36? Therefore, if the Son makes you free, that's redemption. That's, that's the justifying death of Christ, where he says, I'm going to be treated by God as if I committed every sin you ever committed. But because I did that, 
There is the other side of my work of salvation, and that issues into my sanctifying life lived out inside of you. Let me show you how that, that happens, because Jesus, who died on the cross to make us free, this morning tells us our redemption means that we were each bought to be slaves that glorify him. And the song of heaven that should reverberate through our lives every day as our purpose is that I was bought to be a slave of God. 